afternoon, good evening, everyone at Caljam Land. Uh, another great pre Caljam podcast, sponsored by our great friends up in Palmyra, Wisconsin. Standard well, process, but we got one of my probably bestest friends ever in the chiropractic profession. He saved me from metapractic hood and brought me into this world as a chiropractor. Took me and baptized me. Into Dude, you were birthed. I think we took you out of the, uh, we took you from the chiropractic womb. But you were a little confused in the dark in the womb, and we took you. I was you really confused, not a little bit. <laughs> well, maybe we should introduce who we have on the call here. We have Dr. Fred D. Domenico on the call here from Elite Coaching, and I'm going to be speaking yeah. at your gig coming up next month. I'm excited about yeah. that. I'm fired up. We got we got a great crowd for you too because you know what you're always a celebrity there, man. And uh, you know they're already preconditioned with f bombs and everything, so you just fit right in perfect <laughs> perfectly. Well, you kind of warm them up a little bit. I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not like uh, you know Mother Teresa up in the front there. With the perfect. <laughs> That's why I have my Cal Jam hat on. Yeah, you have just... one of the uh, signature Billy D signature uh, Cal Jam beanies, which are very rare. We only make a hand because they're. She spends three hours on each one of those beanies. So knitting them. That's what Janie does at night, knitting no, them. No, she doesn't know. That's not what Janie does at night. <laughs> so, you know, hey, anyway, you know, getting back to where you said, you know, it's uh, like you represent hope. So to, so to come from, you know, having the, the vibe with the coffee beans and, and the, I don't even know. I don't even know. The Wartenberg pinwheel and the, yeah. The yeah, and all that stuff, man. And you, you went from, I think, what was it, eighty-eight a week to three fifty a week in like sixty days. Yeah, it was something like that. I would say, yeah, about sixty days, two to three months. Yeah, and so you know, people think growth has to happen slow. Like just because you grew gradually up to this point doesn't mean that you can have exponential growth with a mindset shift that fast. Right, right, right. And that's what you teach in your in your coaching too. I mean, how do you get doctors to see that that's a reality? Because many times people think it's got to be slow incremental growth. But if you can have a month where you have 60, 80 new patients, and I'm not saying that's what you want or what do you advocate, but I like that. I mean, that's what I feel comfortable with in my practice. I mean, if I can do 15 new ones a week, I'm happy with that, you know, and it's just, it's that's something that's definitely attainable with speaking and getting out of your office and doing I don't know I'm big on social media uh, I don't know what you teach your crew what do you teach them well we're kind of a little bit opposite to what chiropractic does we're all about pattern interruptions you can you can grow your practice without 60 new patients you know chiropractic is about lifetime right got when it you get 60 people we have 60 patients get into lifetime care and you know uh, we were always I remember Schofield man because we went back we used to go to Schofield every month, right? Right, right. And I remember a DE when Schofield broke 500 a day, and he was up on stage, and he said, someone asked me, how do I do it? And he said, one at a time. Right. And I never forgot that. Right. It's all about loving people one at a time. When you learn how to do that, and, and the biggest problem is chiropractors know, the, the reason your practice, the problem people have trouble going to practice, because your mindset is at the level that you're at. When your mindset and your systems match the level of your vision, yep. all of a sudden growth, your growth becomes a vacuum and you get sucked up to that next level. And that's why we see when people go to these boot camps who have an elite, their mindset shifts. You know, you don't even realize that, you know, your friggin' subconscious mind is running 95% of your life and is running your practice. And you blow out these subconscious beliefs that you don't even realize. You get your mindset to the next level and literally you're sucked up a hundred more visits a week, right? Or 150, or 75, or whatever you want to do. It can happen like that. It's just it's what's holding us back is inside us, right? So you think that's what happened when I went to DE? It basically just affected my subconscious, Dude, or what your was? Your conviction went through the roof, right? In like five minutes, like right. you heard the story. That was it. You had a massive mindset shift. And you went from, because it, you know, I've said this about you before, at 88, you were all about yourself. Okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was because I, I personally didn't have a lot confidence. of faith. No, Yeah, that too. I didn't have a lot <laughs> of confidence. I didn't have a lot of uh, faith in chiropractic. I looked at it as just a, a treatment for back pain, which I 
my eyes were open to the reality that chiropractic is so much bigger than that. Uh, well, yeah, so you had more fear in you than right. you had principle. Okay. Right? So that's about yourself because you were more, you were stopped by your own fear. Right. And then immediately you went to community. Right. So when you said, shit, man, we got to change the community, you went to 350. Right, right. Then when you said you got to change, and then you started uh, – Dead card DCS, right? right? Right. I mean, then you went up to like 600 when you expanded your conscious on community. DCS was about the profession, and Cal Jam is about humanity. Right, right, right. So, look, a dude that was stuck on himself went to humanity, and look what you've created. Right, right. That's it, man, because now it's, it, you know, it's not the less it became about you, the bigger that you got. Right, right. And that's it, man. Yeah, that's and I, I really didn't understand what you said about me because, I mean, I've never really been, you know, egotistical about chiropractic. So I, that's what I thought you initially meant. But you basically said that my fear was about getting in front of speaking. I mean, I used to be freaking terrified to speak in front of two people, dude. I mean, it was literally that was probably one of my biggest fears. And I know that's hard for people to understand because they see me now. But it wasn't because I had this great speaking coach or I had this transition from going to Toastmasters. It was because literally I got the big idea and there was nothing that was going to hold me back from getting that message out to more and more people. And we would alternate the workshops. You know, before I came over to work with you, I remember my I went to DE. This was before we met you. And I'm like, shit, I got to teach a workshop. The first workshop was three people. I had diarrhea all day. Yeah. Literally, I had diarrhea. Uh, and mine was next... two. I had two at my first workshop, and I had diarrhea, and I had a problem with wetting my pants as well. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But and then dude, the second thing, so funny thing, you, I didn't you have say diarrhea. that because it's like I know people go through that all the time, and you forget for your simple beginnings. You forget that, you know, it is terrifying to get in front of people for the first time, you know, and for me to – go from where that from that point to where I'm at right now where I feel really comfortable speaking sure of course I still get nervous before I speak I think when you stop getting nervous before you speak you're losing you know that edge that you should have you should have that a little bit of adrenaline before you speak and you should have a little bit of butterfly what now I think it's not really about nervous about being speaking I think it's more you're anxious about the result right like you're more anxious that you want to make an impact you're not nervous about speaking you're more anxious because of the impact that you want to create. Right, right, right. Uh, what do you think? That's, yeah, that's I my... think I think that's it too. But I sure. I mean, I mean, I still get nervous a little bit, especially when I'm in crowds that I don't really like. When I speak in Europe or Australia, it's to me, it's like it's. I get a little nervous because I'm not sure they're going to kind of get my vibe. I mean, like, like I said, with, with your camp, it's easy for me to get up there because I can just go 100%, know I can be myself and people are going to relate to it. Whereas I go to other countries and they don't get the passion thing. They don't get the American craziness. They don't get, you know, my stance on certain, you know, topics, whether it's geoengineering or anti-vaccination or whatever it is I'm talking about. I just know in some crowds I'm going to be more readily accepted than in crowds that are going to be a little bit more critical of, you know, that kind of passionate American balls to the wall delivery that. Hey, here's the bottom line, dude. The bottom line is you're still there because your purpose takes you to audiences that you may not have. You know, there's a shitload of, sorry, boatload of uncertainty. No, you can say shitload. I mean, this is, there's not ever been a censorship. Uh, that's why these podcasts are kind of, they either love them or hate them. So it's like, well, I'm not going to change who I am. I haven't dropped an F-bomb yet today, though, so I'm pretty excited about that. Right. But Gilles, my F-bomb coach, though, he tries to get me to stop saying them. So who I, is? Oh, Gilles, your F-bomb coach. <laughs> do, you have to pay him, do you have to pay him extra because he's always working so hard? <laughs> no, I just have to pay him per F-bomb that I drop. So. Oh, which, which can be more expensive? <laughs> it can. All right, That's so fun. what do you got going on? I mean, you got your camp coming up in uh, – in, what's the date on that? Uh, January 13th through 15th. Yeah, the boot camps. You know, that's our patient management communication system. But it's really not even about chiropractic. It's about expanding your consciousness to realize – you know, we say the four subconscious beliefs. You know, and this is, and this is who we became, who we always were – 
Number one is chiropractic is universal law. It's the truth, man. It's universal law. Number two, the universe has intention. What's that mean? Every person standing in front of you is standing in front of you for a reason. Right. Right. Number three, they every spirit since we're spiritual beings when they hear universal truth it re it speaks to their heart so every person knows since chiropractic is universal law they feel it in their body as truth right and number and number four they want to be in relationship with you so when you have the when those beliefs are in your body meaning you don't even have to think about it you're talking about a universal law there's another spiritual being standing in front of you now why are they there because they're subluxated, they may not know what a subluxation is. Their frontal lobe think that they came there because of a headache. But if the universe has intention, their spirit came there because they're saying, my body's subluxated and I can't reach my sole purpose in this subluxated body. And I'm here because you have a message that I want to feel and I know is truth in my heart and I want to be in relationship with you. Now, when you believe that and you feel it in your body, then you know every message pierces to their heart. Like when you look at you, when you look at Chris Zeno, when you look at Patrick Gentempo, all these people, they don't speak to people's frontal lobes. You know, when you get in a frontal lobe battle, you're dealing with stupid objections. Right, right, right. So what the boot camps do is they teach you how to talk to someone's heart, right. how to hear what they're not saying, and how to deal with these dumb frontal lobe objections. So once you clear that out, people automatically move into your program. And that's what creates growth. You know, chiropractic has spent so many freaking years on solving, in my opinion, every problem with marketing. You wanna grow your practice, market. You know, you wanna do this, market. You got people leaving, market. When really the principle is about lifetime. Right, 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 right. So, so if you look at it, what our model teaches is that if a person comes in Man, look at, the, look at the vaccination laws in California. Is really your job to create a chiropractic patient or is your job to create a chiropractic leader? Right. Because we can't send the sheep out into a community of wolves. we got to create wolves right, that right. lead the pack. Right, right. And so what we teach is you have to be a wolf first. You got to be a wolf so you can create a pack of wolves so when they go out of your clinic – their daughter's not getting the HPV virus at school. Right, right, right. They're standing up against the school systems. They're showing up in Sacramento. You know, they're doing these things. because. So if we look at, if your goal is create a chiropractic patient, then you're thinking so low on the totem pole. Right, right. We show you how to create leaders. Right. And then when you create a leader, they go into the community and they bring people back. Right. You know, it's kind of funny you say that, but I, that's one of the things I've noticed over the past few years is that the people that come to see me pretty much already kind of have it. You know, they're, they are wolves. You know, they're not the sheep. It, because during the whole SB 277 thing, I was going, Jesus, everybody that's coming to me is unvaccinated. And it's because I was doing all these vaccine workshops. And I was starting to think, you know, what percentage of people are, you know, not vaccinating? And I found out it was like maybe 2% at the most. And it was just because of the energy and the, the direction I take with teaching and my community relationship. You know, and I don't know if that can be a negative. Do you think that can be a negative because of the fact that, you know, you got somebody that's on the, the whole pro vaccine program, they're not going to want to come and see me. And I've often wondered, is that going to be a reason for people to reject coming in to see me and going to see a different chiropractor? Not that I don't want them to see another chiropractor, but of course I want to create change in my community by bringing wolves so do you think there's any detrimental effect from being as outspoken as say i am or anybody else you know man is there two hundred thousand people in orange county that don't want to vaccinate their kids there's more people yeah exactly their kids than you can see right right we need friggin a hundred billy d's just in newport beach Right. You know, right. to be able to handle all the kids and all the parents that have a question, they have a question, but they don't know where to go. Right. See how many people are on the fence. There's enough. You can't take care of all the ones that don't want to vaccinate their kids. Yet all the ones that have questions that don't know what to do that are still vaccinating their kids. Right. Right. You know what I mean? There's more than you can handle. We need a hundred 
uh, of voices like that just in Orange County. Now let's right. go to San Diego. Now let's go to L.A. Right. Now let's go across the country. Yeah. Let's then across the planet because it's going on yeah, the Yeah, across the planet. Right. Yeah. So there's the answer to your question, man. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I've often wondered that. I wonder if I'm being a little bit too, uh, you know, it's not like with social media, I can be a little bit abrasive, I think, because I feel it in my heart so deeply that the, literally it's maiming and destroying kids' lives, which it is. I mean, it's there's not, and they're killing kids. I mean, and to allow that to happen is just not going to happen on my dime. And again, I'm very, very outspoken to a point where, yeah, I'm going to piss off people. I mean, and again, I, those are probably people I don't want in my practice anyway. So it does, a, it does, because that's what you're really about. You're really about tr- attracting people that, obviously are going to be into the chiropractic model and into the chiropractic paradigm well you know i'm not trying to put words there i just i don't i'm trying to learn yeah you know here's the way i look at it and this is a total pattern interruption if a person is going to come in and we want to change the way we live then to me chiropractors are really self-empowerment coaches with the best health health care application right but we've never been trained how to take somebody in that is stuck in their mind and help help them release that and so we can help people live differently because that's not chiro- what chiropractic really is we want to teach people to live differently right but we've never been trained on how to deal with that no, we haven't never so and that's what our boot camps are man it's professional self-empowerment training and and what's the outcome they go through spinal correction because subluxations kill. Let's friggin' fix them. Right, right. And let's have an a 80% of 8 out of 10. Uh, you know, our thing is get 8 out of 10 of your new patients committing to care and 8 out of 10 of those become in lifetime. When you do that, you don't need to frickin' market. You know, because now you create wolves. And wolves go out and they change the community. So if you look, I remember saying this to myself is you know if i don't create a leader i can't do it myself i can't change my community myself right right right. i'm gonna create 100 200 leaders because i don't want to do screenings on the weekend no dude we did that we lived at the swap meet man we we did everything we possibly could yeah and that that brings up another topic that i kind of like uh there was something that uh uh, I can't think of his name right now. So I can't remember who it was. Somebody had mentioned that uh, there were young students that were looking for money through GoFundMe to open their practice. So I'm thinking, Jesus, that's pretty bold asking for money. I mean, and again, I also see this trend a lot in the profession. I don't know what you advocate or what you recommend or what you feel about it, but you see these guys get out of school and they're bragging about working three and a half days a week and working 20 hours a week or 16 hours a week. And I'm thinking to myself, we busted our fucking asses off when we got out of school. And it wasn't, it wasn't because we did it because we did it because we fucking wanted to change the world. We weren't like, Oh, I'm so proud. I only work 16 hours a week. You know, I get to go ride my mountain bike the rest of the time. It's like, we did it because we were literally on fire to change the world. And again, look at me today. I mean, I literally get up and I'm not saying this is what everybody needs to do. And I'm not, but I just see the mindset where everybody wants to like, do less and it's like I don't get it when you have like this jewel in your hand which is called chiropractic to save the world why would you not want to like be on your friggin soapbox 24 hours 20 you know 365 days a year and again I'm not going to say that you shouldn't take breaks and you shouldn't enjoy life and you shouldn't spend time with your family but I think there's been this major shift in, in people's work ethic and you know i know you can work smarter and again they, i look at all that stuff but what's your what's your feeling on all that you know man because you like you just brought it up you said we worked our asses off and i'm not saying that well right. you know, we didn't know any different we just we just did it i mean we weren't married or had kids or anything like that right and right right excuse. and i don't you expect know, people to do what we did either but you know no, man. you know we don't do that but then Here's the deal. I say, well, I work three and a half days. Great. Well, okay. I'm gonna. I'll probably piss a bunch of people off. How many people do you see then? Yeah, you know, exactly. Three and a half days, and I don't. You know, three and a half days. But are you producing the most? Are you seeing the most people possible? Right. Like, are you are you nonstop? Is there is there a line of people waiting when you open? And are people calling in because they're running late and they're begging you to stay? You know, I mean, is there that kind of demand and energy in your practice? 
or are people calling and canceling? You have three days, you know, three and a half days. You know, what's the energy of that? Yeah. How many, who, now, many who would you piss off with that? That's what I want to know. What's that? Who would you piss off with that statement? Uh, people that want to justify why they're not seeing enough or why they're unhappy or why they don't want to look in the mirror. Right, right, right. Well, those are people. Yeah, I don't give a shit it. about those people because, I mean, the reality is not it's not about the community. It's not about people. It's about themselves is what it basically boils down to. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we started, we just worked hard because we didn't know what else to do. And we, and we had the humanity consciousness. Right. But then, uh, you know, there's you, me, and John, right? And uh, you blew up to 250. We didn't, because you were ahead of us. We didn't even have our license yet. Right. And we, we were, and we failed the boards and we were at 250 a week, you know, practicing with our license. Like yeah, this. I don't know. I wasn't, I was just an a independent contractor there. So I, I can't be implicated in any of that. That was all Dr. Walker's gig. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Whether it was, right, that was it, man. You know, we went from nothing to, you know, 250. You went from 88 a week to 350. And then uh, we were, you know, between the three of us, you know, it was like 1,200 a week out of that clinic. That tiny, like, you guys were seen out of like 160 square feet. And I think I had probably, maybe I had a, a little bit more than you. Maybe I had 200 square feet. But yeah. we were literally, and it was just, I know Jane had started working there when when she had moved down here, Mary Jane, uh, the queen of Cal Jam, she came down and she just couldn't take it because it was just friggin', she's used to like organization and you know, everything. <laughs> it was just fucking chaos, dude. It was and just energy. It, we had no leadership. It was us trying to run the thing and keep our leader in check. And But the thing was in our hearts, we were literally, you know, out to change the world and again I don't have any regret I've always like that's one of the things my dad taught me was a work ethic and I mean I don't look at what I do I mean like right now is this considered work like I'm doing a I'm, I feel so torn right now I'm doing a podcast with Fred you know of course I'm going to go surfing I've got already got my day plan I'm going to be surfing at noon and I'm going to get out in the sun and, and surf so yeah I work my ass off doing what I love to do and you know, I get to be who I want to be. Who it's like in the like you said in the beginning, I was not comfortable in my own skin. I was like I didn't feel like you know I could be myself. And you guys really brought that out in me too. I mean, I remember you both, John and you yourself, and and John saying, "Why don't you just be you instead of being the the dickhead white coat chiropractor?" You know, with your black bag full of coffee beans. I mean. That wasn't me, but I was trying to be somebody because, yeah, I was trying to impress people that, oh, I'm this smart doctor kind of guy. In reality, I just should have been the amazing chiropractor that so easy to be these days. Well, you know, I tell people that all the time in our coach group is stop being a doctor yeah, and just, be, and just be a great leader and inspire a person. You know, and the whole thing is we're talking about how much we worked and how much we did this, but what's really the point? Man, we there was a passion and a purpose that I literally owe everything that I'm doing today to those days that put those roots of purpose and principle so deep that that's I give credit to those days of why we do what we do today. Right. Goes back to those DE days, man. Ben Lerner would hang out with us. You know, a lot of the great leader Joe Borio, a lot of the great leaders Patch and Tempo on the stages today were, were those DE guys. Right. That's where they came from, man. Right, I know, I know, I know. DE guys. Right, right, and right. the hardcore principle. Right. Yeah, you think about it, it's just like those were the guys. And that's a whole nother thing that we gotta look at. A lot of our, the, old, the old timers, there's not many of them left anymore. I mean, we've just right. had, you know, Sid passing and you know obviously Fred Barge who was our, one of my I, I think she was one of your favorites too oh heck yeah man. yeah I mean all these guys are moving on so there's got to be somebody to replace those people to carry the torch it's like almost like almost a responsibility for us in leadership uh, positions to really maintain the integrity and the passion of this amazing profession and carry it on for future generations and i'm seeing this especially you know traveling globally you go to like places like europe where they don't really have like any like 
founding principles. They don't get it. And I, I, that scares me that they're not only diluting chiropractic, but diluting the philosophy because they never ever, you know, were exposed to it. And once people are exposed to the philosophy, it's just like, dude, how come I haven't heard this before? I mean, this is like total 100% common sense. And patients say that all the time too when they come in. Go, how, how come nobody's ever told me this before? Why is this the first time I'm hearing this stuff? And... You know, I, I'm kind of concerned about a profession where, you know, a lot of the chiropractic schools are more geared towards back pain, metapractoid kind of to, to paradigm to just the few that I would refer to. Well, here's the funny part, man. You know, because when, when you're living in your body, you know, you feel young, like you feel like you're 30. And then you look in the mirror and you look at that gray beard. So I, so I shave, so I don't see that gray. And then you realize, shit, I'm the old time for now. <laughs> Because, like, dang, man, although in our body, man, no, no, old timer, like, I still feel like that young kid at DE. No, I do, too. But then we look at the mirror, like, shit, maybe I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm that guy now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, don't you think? No, it kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You called right. it, like, somebody gave me one of those those shirts. I don't know. It was uh, Old Guys Rule. I go, fuck, I don't want to wear that shirt. You know, I don't want to be considered an old guy. I don't feel old. I have, like, none of that in my system. I mean, I still right. love surfing. And I think surfing keeps me young. I know chiropractic keeps me young. I know eating healthy keeps me young. I know Dude, the- purpose keeps you young, Yeah, man. purpose keeps you young. I mean, that's, that's it. Still, but- yeah. Every, all that other <laughs> stuff is, well, I mean, surfing is purpose, too. That's yeah. Different. No, that's your, for your spirit. But all that other stuff is because of purpose. Like, right. why do you eat the way you do? Because when I don't take care of my body, I can't fulfill my purpose. Right, exactly. Why do you have your consciousness? Because inspiration freaking bathes your cells in health and right. energy. It inspires, yeah, inspiration. Yeah, exactly. man, and, and theos, you know, and God, you know, it, that's energy moving through you. That's why it's like this. Yeah, yeah. So you take care of your body because that's the vehicle to get shit done. Plus also, I mean, over the holiday, which is almost over, I just did. I got off, not a, hugely off track, but you know, just when you're, when I'm around my Filipino family, it's like I'm not eating 100% healthy, and it's just like I can't do that to myself because it lowers my just energy and my vibration, and it's a good test for me because it just gets me right back on track again because I love feeling at a just that higher level of expression. You know, I love being adjusted three or four times a week. You know, I love not having a TV on in front of me because I mean that's when I go to the Filipino house and there's always the TV is always there it's like the devil just like sucking you in to poison your brain as I say yeah so it's just good to be back on track and and, you know back doing podcasts I had a week off it was good it was good but yeah you know I went to the dark side a little bit you know had a few lumpias and probably a little bit too much sugar which I think is the real like gateway drug personally I'm, I'm starting to say that now because look at look at it kills through obesity diabetes cancer is all promoted through just eating high fructose corn syrup sprayed with glyphosate go ahead dude i was you know we're italian man i've had more eggplant parmesan at a big night over my sister's house big brick of lasagna yesterday yeah yeah Cotton cheese all that stuff. So like, man, I haven't eaten this in a long time. I think well, I think I was using a serving spoon. Yeah. <laughs> you want a fork? No, this serving spoon is just right. the serving spoon is working great. Yeah, it is. Just give me a spatula, that'll work for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, doing it once in a while is not going to kill you. It's uh, obviously we're here to live, but it's just I just know how I feel when I eat good versus not so good. Yeah. Dude, you got Cal Jam coming up, man. So vibration is rising. Yeah, I was here till midnight last night working on music, which is something. I, it's a labor of love. I mean, I love it, and it, the you know, it's practice. You got to practice. It's like anything else in life. You got to practice. You practice, 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 and then practice some more. You know, that's I like practicing. You know, and that's why they call practice a practice because you're always practicing to be better at your art of serving your your community and that's what you are about you're about teaching chiropractors how to practice better yeah well you know cal jam man i'm gonna give a little different this isn't it's not gonna be 
what I'm going to talk about is how to be like a tornado, man. I use, I'm going to use this metaphor. You know, when you see a tornado, like the clouds that come together, that's like universal intelligence. You know what I mean? And then we're a channel. We're an aid intelligence. So we're part of something bigger, right? The tornado, that funnel is our innate. That's like we can channel energy from universal intelligence because chiropractic is a universal law. We can channel it through us. That's spirit, spirit, mind, body, right? And when that when a tornado hits the ground, now it creates it creates physical stuff. If that funnel never hits the ground, then it doesn't it doesn't create any physical action. I mean, other than you know hail and all that stuff, right? But see, when we when we adjust people, this is Sigafoo's taught me how to go from an adjuster to a healer. And before I adjusted people, I used to breathe because I took martial arts, and I would imagine energy from the universe channeling through me and your hand is where that tornado hits the ground and when you have that energy coming through you man all you do is touch someone you move the bone BJ talks about that the the adjustment with that extra something if if you believe in chiropractic principle then we're innate intelligence we're part of something bigger that's where that cloud comes together and you can focus that energy through your hand and every adjustment is massive healing. It's like if you lay on the table and I used to say, I used to tell my patients, if you're if someone's under my hands, they will heal. Right. That's the way it is. Because that's what I pictured every adjustment. Why don't more doctors think that way? I mean, it's just to me it's like common sense. I mean I, I mean obviously I, I think being around long enough you start to realize that, but Again, that's why I, the whole back pain model to me is just like so antiquated. Small. What? Small. It's so small, dude. It's, it's insignificant. Like, it's like, I, I mean, I, again, if, you, if that's all you want to do, then I'm not stopping you. It's like, I mean, I, of course, I think I know there's so much. <laughs> well, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to change everybody's mind, you're not Fred. You're going to physically stop them, but you're going to have an opinion. Yeah, of course, I've got an opinion. I mean, I've, I'm very, it's one thing I'm known for as being very polarizing but again you've got like an orthopractic movement where they just want to be low back pain doctors i mean i'm not going to fight those guys i mean it's not worth wasting my time on those kind of people yeah you know all you have to do is come in my practice for one day and you see all the kids are getting on the table and again they didn't come here because they were healthy they came here because they had a usually a reason to come in the reality is people should come here because they're healthy and not end up being sick, but we haven't got that message across to the world yet. Uh, but it's just it, the whole thing is it's like you know I was the same way. I was definitely groomed to be more of an orthopractic, metapractic chiropractor, and it was just working with kids and seeing the miracles with kids. And they're not miracles; it's just the body's a self-healing organism. You just got to get shit out of the way and allow the body to express its potential to be healthy. All you need to do is see that on a, on a daily basis for 31 years and there's no like doubt in your mind about what chiropractic could do and what you can do as a chiropractor facilitating, like you said, you're that tornado where it focuses that energy. And again, it doesn't have to be, you know, a Fred D. Domenico gondroid adjustment through the floor, which I, I prefer that personally. There's nothing worse to me than, you know. And that's the way Bars adjusted us. Right. I mean. Again, I don't want to get in a technique battle here, but I mean, I just know what my body works better. I like to feel my adjustments. I like to feel a physical change. The bone, man. Right, right. Yeah. yeah and I'm move. starting to see that a lot working with a lot of the students too. Is that, you know, it's good to learn those more more esoteric techniques and more non-force stuff. But I think it's also important that they learn some good old, you know move the bone chiropractic and then you know come up like i tell people i don't want you to become you know a pedaboner or a gondroid or a, you know a you know, gras stick or whatever i want you to go learn as many different techniques as possible then come back and maybe just make up your own technique something that works for you because now we're you don't want to just be a picasso or a monet you want to be you you want to be a fred dina mcconnell you want to be a billy d you want to be john q public or john smith or whatever it is you don't want to have to try to fit in somebody else's mold which to me is again old boring and it's just not where chiropractic is about freedom and expressing your own potential to be yourself and best deliver your product but yeah it's based on principles and foundational tenets that have to be maintained 
and you're, there has to be you know an objective with what you're doing you can't just like all of a sudden say okay i'm this artist now i don't have any freaking you know there's nothing to it it's just other than i'm thinking it's going to work and it works so there's got to be some substance to it too right on Cool, man. Well, actually, at the time, I got to get on. A, I got to get on a call in a minute, but I'm um, fired up about Cal Jam. Uh, you know, are you gonna still do the Guido calls for me though? I need the Guido call still done. Yeah, I'll come by your office, man. I'll. I'll uh... Okay, because we're rolling out a new uh, program about uh, trying to get the the speakers and also the vendors more motivated to do email blast for us. So I need the Guido. The Guido for all the listeners. It's just. I just gonna have Fred just make some nice friendly phone calls. It's, you scared a couple people though the first time, huh? <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, when you call them and you answer, "Yo, yo, bro, you haven't <laughs> said anybody yet, man. What's yo, wrong with like, you? Who's this? What are you talking to me? With, you know, <laughs> when you get that, then all of a sudden, who is this? Yeah, exactly. I haven't changed my approach next time. Yeah. You just tell him the Godfather sent you, the loving Godfather here. At the right, Algae and I'm, uh, I'm like, uh, you're John Gotti. What, what was his hitman name? That freaking, uh, I forget that dude that, that was like the crazy guy. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but, but before I, we I go, I just also want to throw out, you started a thing at, uh, I don't know, did you start at Monaco's gig or was it? It was at your gig, the Italian Stallion Crew. What's that all Kyra about? Mafia. Yeah, the Kyra. yeah, we're putting that together. It's uh, well, the the beginning four was Zeno, Monaco, Borio, and you um, and you. Yeah, and me, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, this is the third one. Yeah, Di yeah, Domenico, Borio. Now, there's other people that have called themselves the Chiropractic Mafia. It's what about like, Cat Irish? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, how can you be Irish and call Well, you can no. have an Irish mafia. You know, there's a, you know, there's a Filipino mafia and there's also, there, there are. Dude. There's a Mexican mafia, dude. That's just the way it is. They just stole the name from the Italians, you know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so so then Ca is Capra, the Capra's a good Italian dude. Is he in the gig too? Capra will be in the gig. Jet Tempo is a no bad Pampa? Pampa. Pompa will be in the gig. Hey, Pompa already wants in. Hey, what's Pompa's first name, anyways? Do you use I just have one? What about Capra? Have Does Capra have a first name? Capra doesn't have one either. <laughs> They're kind of like Bono and, and the Edge. They just kind of just they just got one name. It's simple, man. They get probably they were dyslexic when they were young and they didn't know which one to write fill yeah, out so first. It's just Pompa. I like that. All right, I know you got to go because I got to go too. You probably have an eleven o'clock and it's eleven o'clock straight up. Just let yeah. you know, I love and appreciate. It. Thanks for having you on Cal Jam this year and uh, spread the word, rock and roll. Right on. Peace. Over hey, down. see you in Park City. I'll be there. Happy birthday, Cal Jam! It's our tenth anniversary, Cal Jam ten. Come out and party with all of us, Dave Asprey, Suzanne Humphrey, David Wolf. We're going to have the most awesome celebration, celebrating massive health, celebrating planet sustainability, and celebrating chiropractic.